Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. In today's video, you are going to see a lot of different meals and lunches that we have eaten this week during the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. And so far, we have not had to buy any groceries. Um, I did make allowances for myself, um, meaning that I can buy fresh in-season produce locally if I don't have it in my own garden. So. I bought some strawberries and I bought some tomatoes from a local greenhouse. Today, um, the feature of today's video is going to be strawberry shortcake um, using very simple ingredients and serving it just the way that my grandmother did. So the strawberries in our own garden have only given us enough for fresh eating and it is time for us to revamp that whole section of the garden. So I am taking a short drive to my brother's house where he has a berry farm and buying strawberries from him means that I get to help him support his family. I'm going to wash these strawberries with some apple cider vinegar to help neutralize any pathogens or bacteria that could be on the skins of the strawberries and also the acid of the vinegar will help dissolve any chemicals that could be clinging to the skin of the strawberries. Because strawberry farming is part of my brother's livelihood, I do know that he uses these kinds of sprays to help ensure that he gets a good crop of strawberries. When we get strawberries from our own garden, we aren't that particular about how we clean them and we often eat them straight from the garden. So one of the things my grandma was always very, very strict about was that when you take the top off, there better not be any strawberry left with that green. She would have been appalled that some people have so much strawberry left on their tops that they can make jelly from them. Good job, Harrison. Like this is all that she wanted me to take off, just the green and the core. There's no need to use a knife and cut the strawberry. Only thing that you need is just the green top. And the chickens are every bit as happy to turn those green tops into eggs for us as the boys are to have fresh strawberries to snack on. We got the strawberries all cleaned and strawberry shortcake, like when you start it, it's kind of like a muffin dough or a pastry dough. So we need to cut, in, cut the butter and sugar and flour together. And this butter is from the refrigerator, which is great for making pastries. Um, but to help me get it all into crumbs, I am going to cut it into little pieces. 
So you'll need three fourths a cup of cold butter. And I've got my three cups of flour and my one and a half cups of sugar. I like to use my hands to work my pastry dough because that's the way my mom and my grandma taught me and that's what feels right to me. But you definitely could use a pastry cutter here if you're more comfortable with that. No matter which way you decide to work your pastry dough, the ending product should be nice fine crumbs like this. Okay, once your crumbs are all nice and fine, you're gonna reserve one cup of crumbs and this is a one and a half cup measuring cup, so I'm not gonna fill it quite to the top. So there's approximately one cup of crumbs. We're gonna add three teaspoons of baking powder. We're gonna add one half teaspoon of salt and three fourth a cup of milk. We're gonna stir that all together and it's gonna get like a cake batter. You want to be sure not to over mix this. Just mix it until everything's incorporated and there's no dry spots. And then we're going to put it into a 9 by 13 pan. And if your batter is too sticky, just wet your spatula to press it down into the corners. And then we're going to take that one cup of reserved crumbs and just sprinkle them over the top. So we're gonna put the shortcake into a 350 degree oven and we're gonna bake it for 30 to 40 minutes or until a knife inserted in the center comes out clean. While our shortcake is cooling, we are going to mash two quarts of strawberries. You can add anywhere from one half to one cup of sugar and a little bit of vanilla. And now to make our whipped cream, we are going to skim some fresh cream from yesterday's milk and we're gonna put it into the blender. So one of the tricks to make your whipped cream churn faster is to put your blender and your cream and everything into the freezer for about 30 to 45 minutes and get everything really good and cold. When your cream has whipped, you can add some vanilla and about 3 4 a cup of powdered sugar. Sometimes for ease of serving a large family, I will mix the whipped cream and the mashed strawberries together and we will just serve that on top of the shortcake. So now that you know how to make strawberry shortcake, I am going to share some of the meals that we have made for our family while we participate in the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. In the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge, we challenge ourselves to use what we have in our pantry or larder. And for us, that means we have lots of eggs. Bread is easy for us to make. We have cheese and we have onions and lettuce and spinach in the garden. So for this meal, we made egg sandwiches on sourdough bread using some Asiago cheese and some sauteed onions and spinach and ham. So for this week's family dinner, the children have requested pizza mountain pies. One of the things that I like to put in pizza mountain pies is sun-dried tomatoes. So I am giving myself the allowance to go to our neighbors and purchase some beautiful locally grown greenhouse tomatoes so that we can have sun-dried tomatoes in our pizza mountain pies. Also used some of yesterday's milk and made some fresh mozzarella for our mountain pies. So we are all set up out here for our pizza mountain pie family dinner. We've got mozzarella, we've got sun-dried tomatoes, we've got some basil, and we have ricotta cheese. We have some sausage 
and some onions from the garden. We have some pizza sauce for those that don't want the sun-dried tomatoes. And then of course we've got fresh sourdough bread and homemade butter and our cast iron pie irons. So now it's time to assemble our pizza mountain pies. We're gonna take our fresh sourdough bread and spread it generously with some homemade butter and put them into our cast iron pie irons. I'm gonna add some sun-dried tomatoes to my next. And then I'm gonna be generous with the fresh mozzarella. And then I'm gonna put some freshly chopped basil on top. And then I'm gonna top it with another piece of bread that is generously buttered. And then we're going to attach the top part of the pie iron. And then we put our pie irons into the hot coals. So for our dessert mountain pies, we take cinnamon sourdough bread that we've spread with butter. And then on the inside, we spread some cream cheese and apple pie filling, and we toast those the same way. Moving on to some other meals that we have had this week. Um, last week, I baked some ham that we had in the freezer. And so now I'm using my hand grinder and grinding it up to make some ham salad sandwiches. So all I do for ham salad sandwiches is grind up the ham, add some mayo and chop up some pickles and mix it all together. So for this meal, we had ham salad sandwiches on fresh sourdough bread with some mozzarella balls as a side. So for this meal, I was gone all afternoon and Mitchell marinated some of our homegrown chicken breasts in some Italian dressing for our supper. So we're just going to throw that all on the black stone and grow it while we gather our veggies from the garden. I harvest my lettuce by cutting it off instead of pulling it out of the garden because whenever you cut it off, it will grow back and you will have more lettuce in about a month. And for our favorite homemade salad dressing, I start with about three-fourths to one cup mayo. And then I add about one tablespoon of mustard and one tablespoon of vinegar and scant one-fourth cup of sugar. And I add a pinch of salt and a little bit of cream or milk until your dressing is the consistency that you prefer. Our family has discovered that a little bit of finely chopped fresh lemon in our salad really brightens up the flavor for us. And then we add some salt and pepper and we are ready to have supper.
I hope you have enjoyed seeing glimpses of some of the meals that we have made this week. And here's some other news around the farm. We finally got our five piglets or young pigs moved to the wood pasture where we have been trying to move them to for the last couple of weeks and they just kept coming back to the barn. So this time it appears that we have been successful as they have been staying in the woods in their new pasture. So this is Uno, one of our hen turkeys that is two years old. She has been missing for about a month and just this week she turns up in the backyard with around a dozen baby turkeys. The garden is doing surprisingly well considering that we have had no more than maybe one or two tenths of rain in the last 30 days. We have weeded the corn, and then we've also hilled the corn. This will prevent more weeds from coming through and give the corn a head start on forming a shade canopy that will also work as a weed barrier. We've been hilling our potatoes, and it's a daily chore for the boys to pick all the potato beetles from the plants. God is good even when it does not rain and we trust that he will provide even if it's not in the way that we expected. <laughs> 